10 Cloverfield Lane came about uh, when we we got this script. It was a spec script that uh, it was different in some ways, but the fundamental idea of being, uh, of finding yourself in this cellar, realizing you've been in an accident, that someone has rescued you, but you're chained to this bed and you don't know where you are and you discover that you're in this sealed bunker and the person who has rescued you tells you that there's been this mysterious attack outside. It, it was such a great and horrible notion. It was such a tense uh, 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 conceit. And I remember feeling like it was just, you know, it was like a Twilight Zone idea. What would you do if, you know, you found yourself there? And I think the great stories are great what if stories. And I think if you said to someone, what if you found yourself trapped in a place and you were told it was really dangerous outside, uh, but then you discovered it was really terrifying inside, what would you do? And that idea I thought was just uh, an incredibly powerful idea so we began developing that. Dan Trachtenberg uh, directed this film in a way that uh, I don't think watching this movie you'd ever think this was his first movie. He, he directs with a real confidence, an incredible sense of uh, rhythm, uh, got performances out of these really fine actors uh, that are subtle and authentic, terrifying, and uh, heartfelt. And I just, uh, I was impressed with what Dan did, the way he collaborates with his actors, uh, his crew, uh, with us. It was, the whole experience was, uh, uh, I felt very lucky to get to work with Dan. I was a fan of Mary Elizabeth Winstead's from uh, her work in Scott Pilgrim and uh, was thrilled that she was gonna be in, in this movie. She does some incredible stuff in this movie. Uh, her character, uh, Michelle, has a lot to react to, uh, but it was obviously very important for her, uh, for Dan, for all of us, that Michelle not be a character that is just reactive. She had to be strong, she had to be uh, resourceful and, and obviously proactive. And this is a movie about someone who begins uh, the story, essentially someone who, who runs from trouble. And you meet her and that's what she's doing. And she tells a story in the middle, it's a very emotional story, where you realize uh, that's her condition. And this is really a story about this character coming to terms with, uh, with that side of her, that part of her personality, and realizing that it's the last thing that you can do. And when there is trouble, you need to face it, and you need to grapple with it, and you need to deal with it. Mary plays this character with an amazing strength, even when she's terrified even when she is perplexed as to what move to make, even when she's desperate, uh, shocked, and there's a lot of that going on. She's never uh, giving up. She's always in this moment of what is the right move to make. At its heart, 10 Cloverfield Lane is a puzzle. This, this movie is a constant question. What is the right move for Michelle to make to survive? And I think that Watching the way Mary performs this character and what she and Dan did together, uh, you see her uh, at every turn calculating what the next move is, constantly making moves that she realizes might not have been the right one, revelations that she has to process and do the math to figure out what does she do next because that's not what she expected or what the audience expected. And the beauty of that is I think along the way, the audience is with her uh, every step. And she reacts very much, I think, the way I would like to think we would in that situation uh, from beginning to end. It's almost counterintuitive to cast John Goodman to play Howard because Howard is a character that can be truly terrifying. And John Goodman is so instantly likable. And I think the fun of that is seeing these flavors, these things, these ideas that Goodman presents uh, in the movie, it just, it, it makes it really hard to judge Howard despite what he's doing. John Gallagher Jr., who is uh, someone I loved in Short Term 12 uh, and Newsroom, is someone who just, he makes it look so easy. And this is a character who, uh, Emmett, who is uh, not particularly sharp 
Uh, but it takes, I think, uh, an incredibly sharp actor to play a character like that and make him as uh, authentic and likable as, uh, as John does. One of the fun aspects uh, of 10 Cloverfield Lane is that we uh, developed the story uh, in-house. We shot the film in uh, New Orleans, but in uh, not only editing the film, uh, doing the visual effects uh, for the film, but also doing some of the reshoots and the work that gets done uh, in post, doing that uh, in-house, is there's a kind of homespun quality to it. The, the, the movie feels like it's this... Uh, this project that's been worked on, um, you know, in, in sort of in secret, and it allowed us to uh, sort of surprise audiences with the announcement of, of this movie in a way that, that it didn't get leaked because we weren't working on it really outside of uh, Bad Robot. Kelvin Optical is uh, a department at Bad Robot that uh, is run by Ben Rosenblatt, and it is this sort of production arm that has not only been involved in uh, production on, on a number of, of reshoots that we've done, but also overseas visual effects. Uh, and getting to do that, um, some of the sound effects in-house, um, mixing of the movie in-house, it, it, it's, it's closer to doing uh, a student film or an independent film than it is doing a typical studio movie. And it's I'm really grateful that Paramount has supported our, you know, working on all those aspects of the movie in this way, uh, partly because it's more fun, it's easy access because everything's sort of under one roof, and uh, there's a kind of uh, pride, I think, that everyone here has when something comes together that was, you know, conceived, shot, edited, posted, all here. Um, and it, just, it sort of makes it more fun. It was amazing how many times in, in doing uh, press for other projects uh, I would be asked about Cloverfield. You know, when's the sequel coming? Are you doing a sequel? What about Cloverfield 2? And we discussed with uh, Matt Reeves and Drew Goddard and Brian Burke, we talked about what a Cloverfield 2 might look like. But the truth is that, you know, the idea has got to be better than the thing people might expect to get. And this is in a world where Cloverfield you know, has come and gone, and since that, uh, since then, Godzilla has been in the mix, and Pacific Rim has been in the mix, and there have been, you know, a number of, of movies that have sort of done giant monster, you know, kaiju films, and to do something like that again, it's got to, it's got to, it's got to, it has to be a great reason for it. What we decided as we were working on Ten Cloverfield Lane, which when it came to us was called The Cellar, that movie had so many elements that felt consistent with. Cloverfield. There was a sense of humor to it. There were characters that we related to and really liked. There was a kind of DNA that felt like Cloverfield, though it wasn't the same characters. It wasn't the same monster. It wasn't a found footage movie. There were so many things. Sort of the Venn diagram of these movies was, was too obvious. And because it felt that way in-house, we thought, well, there's no reason this can't literally be a Cloverfield movie. So what we thought was, if a Cloverfield sequel wasn't a literal Cloverfield sequel, but rather an original story, and what if the thing that many people are bemoaning, which is, well, how come there aren't enough original stories now being made uh, by, uh, by major studios? We thought, well, this is actually a great opportunity to allow it to exist in a world where there is a reason for it being a Cloverfield movie, and we have a lot of things that we're working on that are sort of connections, that are uh, sort of in-house ideas. But the idea that, that this movie would be a kind of sibling to Cloverfield and not a literal continuum uh, was very exciting to us. So we started doing that you know, uh, work, making uh, connections and adjustments to the story so that it would serve in what we're looking at uh, the sort of Cloverfield universe, or someone said Cloververse, uh, and it really is just, uh, it, it's a kind of, it's a way of doing um, a series of movies that, uh, that all share a certain kind of connection, and, and yet not feel like we are simply redoing, uh, revamping, retooling, rebooting, but rather doing something original uh, and, and hopefully uh, frightening and entertaining.